Hello everyone, this is Tuba Mirza and welcome to Recoding. Today we are going to build a to-do app which uses core data using Swift UI. So I really hope that you like this topic. Before starting, I request you all to subscribe to our channel as your subscription will make this type of video happen in the future. So without any further ado, let's get started. All the codes used inside this video are mentioned inside the description box. So let's start with core data. What is core data? Core data is an object graph and persistence framework provided by Apple in the Mac OS, iOS, tvOS and watchOS operating system. So you can store data inside your Apple devices. Core data is used as a wrapper for the SQLite database and it's used to save and present any type of user data. It is also called the native solution to store data other than this there are RelDB, Firebase Firestone and more. While there are some other solution to save data that are provided by Apple are Keychain Store, Property List File and User Default. Now look at how the core data works. Core data first and foremost manages an object graph. An object graph is nothing more than a collection of objects that are collected with one another. The core data framework excels at managing complex object graphs. Now let's suppose we need to create a to-do app. We first need to create an object graph which we named as to-do. This object graphs consist of many entities. Entity is a thing, person, place, unit, object or any item about which the data should be captured and stored in the form of properties, workflow and tables. Inside the entity, we create attributes which holds the name of property we want to save inside the entity and its value which should be in any form like string, integer, boolean and so on. Each entity can be connected through a relationship. And all these lies under the object graph. Our entity to do app looks somewhat like this, which consists of many task items inside it. Every entity has some common attributes provided inside the core are string, boolean, binary data, universal unique identification and much more. Now look at the steps to create a core data module. First, go to the file, select iOS tab, then scroll to data model and create it. After creating a data model which includes the entity and attributes, then initialize the persistent store container. Core data provides a set of classes that collaboratively support your app's model layer. An instance of NS Managed Object Model describes your app's types, including their properties and relationships. An instance of NS Managed Object Context tracks changes to instances of your app's types. An instance of NS Persistent Store Coordinator saves and fetches instances of your app's types from stores. Inside the Core Data stack, we have Object Graph Management which hold our entity. Then comes the persistence which holds the fetch request function or exposes to normal user. Now comes the persistence store coordinator which holds between the object graph management and persistence store. Using core data alongside Swift UI now became very easy. As NS managed object confirms to observable objects, fetch request now makes easy to fetch any entity very easily and the managed object is included inside the environment context. Talking about fetch request, it takes three parameter entity or your data class sort description how the data can be arranged inside the fetch data and predicate how to fetch data according to the given provided string of text. This works well for data which has relationship. For example, if we fetch the data for our to-do app, we first give our entity called as item. Then provide the sort description as we want to sort according to the title or ID as you want to sort the data. Then provide the predicate if there is relationship between the data, then provide which data item corresponding to the next data item. So this is how the core data works overall. 
there is much more to know about the core data which we'll surely cover in our future videos. Until then, please do subscribe our channel so you don't miss any further videos. So now let's move towards making our app. Let's take a look how our final app will look. Inside the app, we make a text field which takes the user input then apply a button which adds the written text inside the list we have created above. So now let's create our app. First, select the iOS app. Click Next. Then name the project as you want, then click Next. Then save into the location and create the project. First, we need to create the data model to press Command Plus and Command and select the data model icon and create a data model file. Inside the file, we need to create an entity called as item. Then create some attributes which are called as title which is of type string and id which is of type uuid. Now create another Swift file. Name it as Persistence. Inside it, first import core data. Then create a structure called as Persistence Controller. Inside it, create a constant called shared, which will instantiate the persistent controller class from the core data. Then create a constant container which is of type NS persistence controller. Then we create an initializer which initializes when the structure requires in it adds attributes in memory which is type of bool and initialize as a false which will check that if the core data model is available or not. Now set the contains to ns persistent container class and add the name of the core data model file. Then we check for memory. Container do not persistent store descriptions dot first dot URL. This will fetch many files inside the URL. We only need the URL for the first file, which equals to the URL and provide the root file. After we have fetched the core data model, then we load the core data model using the load persistent store function. Inside it, there is a completion handler. It will throw the store description and error. If there is an error, throw the error as a fatal error. Now open the core data to do app file or the main app file. Inside it, we need to create a constant called as persistence controller. Which equals to persistence controller dot shared, which initialize the persistence controller when the app starts. 
then we can send the data as an environment as managed object context and provide persistence controller dot container dot view context. Inside the content view file, we need to import core data. Then require environment managed object context and name it as view context. This is the same environment we pushed from previous view called as persistence controller. Then we can use fetch request feature of Swift UI. Inside it, provide the item dot entity as entity. Provide sort descriptor, which consists of an array of sort descriptor. It only tells how data appears finally. Then we can create a variable item which takes all the item received from the fetch request function. The item confirms to fetch result which includes a set of items. Then create a state called as task field which store our text data field. Create another view called as task text field which confirms to some view. Then inside it create a edge stack. Inside it add the text file and button. Inside the button, we need to add image which shows icon from SF symbol library. Then add foreground color. We can show visual effect that if the text is empty, it shows gray color and if not, it shows blue. Then set the font size as large title. Then add some padding. Then create a background then add a rounded rectangle inside it. Then fill the color of rounded rectangle. Add some appropriate padding into it. Let's now create add item function.
we need to create a constant and set it to our entity and add view context inside it. Then we set its appropriate fields as we need to provide the title and ID. Then inside it, do catch closure, we can save the data using viewContext.save method. And inside the catch, we can print out the result. Now inside our main view, we create a navigation view. Inside it, create a list. Then create a for each closure. Inside it, we iterate our items which have our fetched result. Then inside it, we set text which receives the title from the item. Then we can set list style as sidebar list style. And add overlay our task text field and align to it bottom. Then add navigation title. Now let's fire up the simulator and check it out. Add first task. Then add another task. Oh, we made a mistake. We have to sort our data according to the title and not ID as it is generated by the device which is not sortable. And that is why we got this error. Here you can see that we can easily add items. Now let's add delete functionality. To do so, we need to create a function which takes the offset which confirms to index set. Inside the main function, we loop through the index set and we got our index. Then set it to the constant we have created. Then add the item into viewContext.delete function. And we can finally save our view context in do try closure and print if any error occurred. So this is how our app will finally look.
I really hope that you liked and enjoyed our video. Do tell us what you liked or disliked inside this video in the comment section. Please do like our video and subscribe to our channel. For now, I'll be signing off. We'll definitely see you in the next video.